It's the Adventures of the Jelly Queen. The Adventures of the Jelly Queens. From the table living Texas style. Such flavor we discover in the state that's like no other. The Adventures of the Jelly Queens. Hey, hi. A fairy tale like few others, Texas style. From food to fun, family to friends. The Jelly Queen's gourmet jellies and jams, handcrafted from the finest organic ingredients, were created in 2012. Handmade in small batches, many times grown in their very own gardens, the quaint Jelly Queen's kitchen commercially manufactures internationally award-winning jellies, jams, sauces, spices, crackers, and scones. It's their attention to detail that has allowed the Queen's to flourish, being named a 2014 Good Food Award winner. Hello again, everybody. Welcome to the Adventures of the Jelly Queens. I'm Scott Murray with the head Jelly Queen herself. Donna Collins. Did you have a good week? We've had a great week. Great. Brand new year underway. And of course, last week we had all kinds of great things to share with our audience. This week we're talking about herbs. Is that right? We went to an herb farm that was just amazing. It's one of the largest herb farms in the country. And the farmer is just adorable. He reminded me of the farmer from the movie Babe. You know, where the, man, the farmer says, that'll do, pig, that'll do. <laughs> So we just fell in love with this farmer and he teaches us wonderful things about what it's like to raise um, all, all, everything on your farm organically. And we're talking about herbs today, but also about apples. And if you think back in time, hundreds of years ago, a fellow by the name of Benjamin Franklin always had that kite by his side, one of the great Americans of all time, certainly. But he is the one that came up with the phrase, an apple a day keeps the doctor away. So today we're going to be talking about apples. We're well, going right? to be using apples in our segment in the kids' kitchen with our new friend, Abby, Abigail, as she likes to be called, as <laughs> she's going to make us some all kinds of little fun snacks that are using apples. And Abigail is without a doubt one of the most adorable young ladies you have ever met. So if for no other reason she's worth the price of admission today here on the Adventures of the Jelly Queens, stick around for that as we move on with show number three. Great to have you along. For Donna, the queen of the Jelly Queens, she is most proud of her court and all that it stands for. In their first year of competition, they were awarded the Most Honored Preserves Company in America Award in 2014. Also winner of HEB's Best Products in Texas Award, winner of the National Good Food Award, and the first American team to ever win the Silver Award of the World Marmalade Competition with their Blood Orange Lavender Marmalade. The very marmalade that has given a new twist to the classic Brown Derby. My next drink I'm going to do, I'm going to have a little help here from Lucky Campbell. Hey, Jeremy. Good How are you doing? Good, good, good. First of all, I just want to thank you for letting me use the parlor. Oh, man, bar. honored to have you. Maybe you can help me make a cocktail. I'm going to do something classic with a twist. Mm. Brown Derby. Oh, one of my favorites. The classic Bourbon Brown Derby cocktail is named after the hat-shaped diner in Los Angeles that became synonymous with the golden age of Hollywood. The taste is both sweet and sour due to the grapefruit juice and a touch of honey syrup. We love it. We're bourbon-centric here at Parliament, so uh, I'm in. All right. Shall we shake her up? Yeah, absolutely. The twist, rather than honey, what we're going to use is the Jelly Queen's Blood Orange Lavender Marmalade. That's a perfect replacement for the honey. So the original Brown Derby cocktail calls for a bourbon, preferably small batch, a honey syrup, and fresh squeezed grapefruit juice. So the first thing that you're going to need for this cocktail is, this, like Lucky said, preferably a small batch bourbon. I like my cocktails a little stiffer. We'll say an ounce and a half to two ounces is probably a safe bet. We're going to get a nice spoonful of the Jelly Queen's Blood Orange Lavender Marmalade. So with a small batch bourbon, typically you're going to have that burn with the back of your palate with a bourbon. So this sweetness is going to cut right through it. It really just depends on how you like your cocktails. The safe bet would be a spoonful, maybe a spoon and a half. 
And then about a half ounce of grapefruit juice, fresh squeezed grapefruit juice. A little ice. We're gonna shake it. And again, just double strain these cocktails due to the consistency of the jellies. One more thing. And that's from garden to glass. In today's Farm Raise segment, Donna visits Ethan Milkis, the very knowledgeable COO of Generation Farms. We grow inside and out. Um, when the weather's conducive, we, we, up until about a week ago, till we dropped down in the teens, we had dill and cilantro and arugula outside. We had acres of it outside, but we had to harvest that because we lost it on the freeze. So we now have over 100 greenhouses, about 325,000 square feet under cover. We farm on about 50 acres outside. We got certified organic by Texas Department of Agriculture. We have open facilities here, Seattle, Michigan, Arizona, uh, Atlanta. We have a farm in Hawaii and in California. So we have kind of this vertical integration. And what, we, what helps us is when we can't grow things here in the summer, our farm in Seattle where the weather is opposite ours, provides us with product then and in the winter we ship stuff to them. As you can see some of the mint it's grown beautifully but you see some of it's a little bit lighter color and part of that is from the fertilization we run everything through the drip drip lines organically but also it's a lack of sunlight that is affecting it and once we get some days of sunlight and it's usually more than one day you need three or four in a row this will green right up and become just like that. So does being in the greenhouse help with keeping pests off of everything and make it easier to grow? Uh, absolutely. Uh, it helps in a couple ways. Number one is you can control the environment by sealing the greenhouses and that eliminates a lot of pests. Uh, in addition, uh, it, it allows if you do spray organically that you can control where it's sprayed and, and you can shut off the area. So it's tremendous. You can eat this within 12 hours after You've right. G generally, uh, organic, the difference between synthetic and organic pesticides is the re-entry period, which means the toxicity level of the what you're, whatever you're spraying. So most organic uh, uh, pesticides that we can spray have a re-entry period of anywhere from 0 to 12 hours. Uh, so that means after you spray, 12 hours later you can go in and just eat it and it's fine. Whereas a lot of synthetic pesticides, you know, you have a waiting period, a re-entry period of a couple weeks. They're very toxic and, and sometimes they can linger. Farming organically is more expensive and you have to be more vigilant because you have to watch out for more pests and problems. The fertilizer is slower. The, the plant takes up, whether it's synthetic or organic, the same way. Fertilizers, it just, with synthetics, it, 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 it makes the plant grow faster and quicker. And so it takes more time and it's more expensive to grow organically, but it's generally it's safer. Yeah, you got to be a better farmer. Thank you for saying that. And we thank Ethan Milkis for his knowledge, his expertise, and certainly his educational tour that he shared with us all at Generation Farms. Now we're here at Chocolate Secrets in Oak Lawn. I'm so excited to show them. They are famous for their hand-painted bonbons. They're going to tell us about the process. They're going to give us little samples, and they're going to show us around. And maybe even listen to a little jazz tonight. So excited. Come on, let's go check it out. Whether you like chocolate or not, it's still worth a trip to Chocolate Secrets simply to view what's under the roof. The presentations are exquisite. Rows and rows and rows of deep, dark chocolate and colorful sweets. Everything made by hand on premises. And this mm. is our 
thing that's about as close to Willy Wonka as we're going to get. It's a oh, wow. chocolate Come take fountain a look. that tempers all of our chocolate molds. It's going to help us measure out everything. Um, we make all of our molds with it. We make all of our shells with it. And it uh, kind of lines up all the crystals. So, so this is really the chocolate I have here in my that's hand right now. That's the one that right you now. have in there right now. Exactly. Yeah. It's a lot of fun. Still lots to come on this edition of the Adventures of the Jelly Queens, including our latest rock star chef right here. Are you ready? All right, Abigail is coming up. Y'all stick around because she's next. Are you the type that's always looking for something different, creative, and unique when it comes to a night of fun, good music, and great food? Then look no further than Trinity Groves, a 15-acre entertainment destination located directly next to the Trinity River at the foot of the Margaret Hunhill Suspension Bridge. Trinity Groves is fast becoming America's culinary creative center. Visit us online to learn more about what we're all about. Simply go to trinitygroves.com. and welcome to Kids in the Kitchen and I will be teaching my dad how to make strawberry babies. Didn't we tell you she was adorable? So we'll step aside as Abigail explains to her dad how to make the perfect after school snack. Okay, so we're gonna um, kind of make a hole in here kind of like you push it in and wave it around in a circle kind of. Wow, okay. And then take that out and put it right here. Okay, wow, interesting. And then kind of take an apple and kind of do the same thing. Kind of, you do the same you still want me to help or you thing. Got you do the same thing right here. Okay. Wow, excellent. And you take this one, you put it back and you take this one and put it in the strawberry. Wow. Oh, and neat. then we're gonna do take some chocolate. Ooh, did you have to melt the chocolate? Yep, for 30 seconds. Okay, good and job. And then you can make your own little eyes. Okay, wow. Right here. Make okay. your own little eyes. And can we eat it right now? Uh-uh. No? Okay. Well, I tried to have a gale. And then kind of do a little smile if you want. Oh, out of chocolate too? Wow. Cool. The smile is kind of hard. Okay. Yeah, that is pretty hard. Okay. Wow. Excellent. So it's kind of just like painting, but with um, a toothpick, and if you want to, you can do a little hair, it's kind of just like painting. How's that guy? That's good. <laughs> and that's how to make strawberry babies. Dad, that was great! You're the best! Awesome! <laughs>
Hi folks, I'm Bruce Yamini, and it's my great pleasure to introduce a new segment to you on the adventures of the Jelly Queens. We're going to loosely call this our DIY or do-it-yourself segment, but in this time together, we're going to explore many different things. Some do-it-yourself, some not so do-it-yourself, but involving kitchens and remodeling and things not necessarily related to food in farm-to-table living Texas style. So we find ourselves here in this kitchen, a DIY gone wrong. When you're starting a project, make sure that you know what you're getting yourself into before you start. The good thing here is we can see the transformation that's quickly happened just with one coat of paint, light color here, wood color here. The product used here utilizes the combination of primer and paint, cutting down time, cutting down effort, cutting down money. So there's been coverage here and you can already see what a difference it makes to have light cabinets instead of the darker wood. Even though the style is the same, the feel is very different with the lighter colors. We still have the dark appliances. That's another way you can quickly change a kitchen, though not necessarily inexpensively, but changing the appliances makes a huge difference. So we'd like to know what makes a great kitchen in your opinion. So please drop us an email at thejellyqueens at gmail.com. Let us know what you'd like to see in a kitchen, maybe what you'd like to see here on our new segment that we call DIY with a Twist. I'm back this week with Chef Robert for my sandwich my 60 second sandwich of the week. So what have you got for me this week? This week we're doing spaghetti squash. Spaghetti right. squash? Yeah, spaghetti squash. On a squash. sandwich? Yes. Okay. Yes, uh, so what we've done here, we've gotten some spaghetti squash, uh, local if possible, but always organic. And guess where they came from? I had a bunch of these eight ball, they're called eight ball squash, and they're, it's kind of like a zucchini, but um, they, uh, they're round. So they look like a okay. ball, and they call the, the green ones eight ball, and they call the yellow ones one ball. And I had just tons and tons of these squash. So he created the squash sandwich. What we've done here is we've taken the spaghetti squash, we split them, we roasted them. All right, and you can do this ahead of time. Uh, roasted them up about 400 degrees for about 30 or 40 minutes until they get cooked all the way through. All right, we've got some... Uh, Texas 1015 onions here. All right, these are really, really sweet. They've got like a high sugar content. Uh, I like them a lot. Uh, I've got arugula. All this stuff came from the garden right down the road. Uh, we just picked it yesterday, and uh, it's even got like some cool little flowers in there, so you know it's really, really fresh. We're serving it with some raw cheddar. Uh, the cheddar today comes from uh, Kemp, Texas. It's my friends at Full Quiver. They are uh, just a great dairy out there. They've got their own cows. Uh, they do all the milking. It's a small family. They make the cheese. It's just a really, really great thing. But this is a raw milk cheddar. It's been aged for about 120 days. So it's got a little, little sharpness to it. All right. We're serving it with a uh, arugula and walnut pesto. So I'm hitting you with a, even more arugula here and, as the spread. And then just a little bit of Florida cell on uh, some great sourdough that I've got here. All okay. right. You, you ready, ready to go? for the timer? Good deal. Let's do okay. it. Okay. So we put a little bit of the cheddar cheese down which uh, I love this stuff. A little bit goes a long way though. We'll take one of these spaghetti squash here and uh, you see once it's cooked, it just comes right out of the shell. Spread that out. Take a little bit of these sweet onions here. Kind of put that on the sandwich. The squash and the onion really, really make a nice balance to me. Okay, I'm gonna take some of this arugula. and then some of the pesto, and then hit it with a little bit of the fleur de sel before we take it over here and put it on the panini press. And then we melt it. And it melts. And it melts. In your mouth. Here we go, here we go. Oh, that looks it's hot. Beautiful. Mmm, like it? Mm -hmm. Pretty good. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's a paper. I was just going to touch down. Oh, wow. Mm -hmm. That's a yeah. touch down. It's kind of crazy, right? Mm -hmm. That's crazy good. Yeah, I like it. <laughs> yeah. 
I'm not sharing. Seems nobody wants to share once they get a taste of the squash sandwich. And it's not just a favorite among the women. I had a bunch of squash and I didn't know what to do with it. So I figured, you know, let's just throw it on a sandwich. And then I started getting these guys coming in, you know, big meat eating, meat and potatoes guys. They'd come in and they're like, hey, can I, uh, can I have another one of those squash sandwiches? And when you get guys that are eating vegetables, you know, you're kind of doing something right. How about you? Want to give it a try? This is how you'd make your squash sandwich. On the first slice of bread, lay slices of cheese, a scoop of squash, spread it across the bread, add a layer of onions, arugula, and a dash of fleur de sel. Now on the top of the second slice of bread, that's where you smear the arugula pesto. Finally, use a sandwich press to grill your masterpiece until the cheese melts. Voila! Enjoy! Hey, have you ever had the opportunity to visit a greenhouse? You've no doubt seen them for years on farms or near agricultural areas. Some are large, others are small, but they all have the same function. To allow for greater control over the nurturing and growing environments of plants, herbs, and flowers. As Donna and Lucian surveyed the interior of this greenhouse, they were making certain the climate and temperature control, levels of light and shade, irrigation, fertilization, and so much more were being carefully watched. All factors that are so important in the growth of all plant life, especially the edible type we all enjoy. Even things like herbs that are grown in a greenhouse tend to be more tender, delicate, and flavorful because they aren't exposed to the outdoor elements. And another reminder, always put your herbs in water and place them on your kitchen counter the minute you get home. If they turn black, that means they've been exposed to conditions that were simply too cold. That's today's quick tip on the adventures of the Jelly Queens. Ever find yourself in the need for audio or video services? Maybe staging for a live production or special event? Then look no further than the Emmy Award winning team at Murray Media. From creation to conclusion, Murray Media can get it done. From corporate to industrial to non-profit videos and special events, television programs, TV commercials, website videos for both professional and personal use. Simply visit our website at murraymedia.net. That's Murray Media, always poised to video your world. Ali Kush, located in Dallas's prestigious Snyder Plaza, is an upscale women's boutique which has catered to the sophisticated woman for more than 20 years. Owner Paulette Martzoff's custom designed clothing collection features her signature fabric in a variety of styles and in more than 40 colors, and her jewelry line is handcrafted from natural elements. Paulette and her talented staff tastefully customize fabric, color, and design for their clientele and invite you to come experience. Ali Kush. The Adventures of the Jelly Queens. Hey! Time now for Kent's Kitchen, a chance to go behind the scenes and into the wine room of the extraordinary executive chef. Well, Kent, this is quite a beautiful room, and uh, I've, I've been in a lot of wine rooms, but this one is really really fantastic. Well thanks, thanks. You know Tracy and I designed this to uh, kind of entertain more than just coming in for a glass of wine so you know the wine is chilled behind me but the room is still room temperature so you can enjoy a nice dinner in here without freezing so that's kind of fun. So what in your collection what do you lean towards? What uh, I mean you got such a variety here it's fantastic. Well we do have a variety. I can tell you that most of the wines here we've collected from wineries that we visited. You know being in the restaurant business we're fortunate that we are able to buy wine from wherever we want to buy it from. But for us it's really more special if we can buy it on a trip where we've met the people, the winemaker, the people that own the winery, you know whatever. They're memories, you know. And so we have uh, I would say that our wine collection leans mostly California because in Texas the California wine industry is very big, but we got a lot of French and Italian things too. And uh, it's just a you know it's a, it's a good collection, and I've I've learned from some of our good customers over the past couple of years. I need to start drinking. Here in North Texas, wine rooms and the like remain a growing trend in new home construction. Not only a place to protect and store the vintage of your choice, but a place to gather and share special times with family and friends. 
What is your favorite? I, I noticed you got a bottle right here. Well, this is a pretty special bottle. I've, I've got a lot of really cool signed bottles and things like that, but this is one of the most memorable bottles. This is a bottle that's signed by Tim Mandavi, and um, we've actually been fortunate enough to have uh, Robert Mandavi in the restaurant. We've had Tim Mandavi at my home and in the restaurant, and Michael Mandavi at my home and in the restaurant. But one of the most interesting people that we've had from the Mandavi family is Robert's wife, Margaret. And uh, she, she came and did a wine dinner at Abacus uh, during the day, and then we went to do a dinner at my home that night. And it was a very interesting story because she has a very specific way she likes to toast. The term toast originated in the 16th century, the first written account coming from Shakespeare's The Merry Wives of Windsor. And as Kent reminded us all, there are certainly some wild and crazy toasts out there. You have to toast going around the room and everybody has to look each other in the eye as you toast. And it has to come all the way around and you can't miss anybody and everybody's got to look. Or, as she says, you have seven years of bad sex. Uh -oh. Nobody wants that. <laughs> when Kent won the Iron Chef competition, he was awarded a beautiful bottle of Louis XIII cognac. But another prize possession is a limited edition bottle of Grand Marnier. There's only 400 of those bottles in the world, and the guy did an etching job on it for us. Check it out. Well, that'll about do it for this edition of the Adventures of the Jelly Queens. We had a chance to see where uh, Ken Rathman kind of hangs, hangs out of the off hours, right? That's a great, great wine cellar he's got. But also, how about this? And we certainly have to thank our hosts here today, allowed us to come into their home, Scott and Abigail. So thank you very much. But this is pretty good looking stuff, huh? It's beautiful wine cellar. Is, is this one of these things that, that you get to take something home, you know, a little sample? I uh, know. Yeah, I think maybe he'll let us pick a sample. <laughs> Keep your fingers crossed, right? Well, that's it for this edition of the Adventures of the Jelly Queens. I'm Scott Marie. I'm Donna Collins, and may all your moments be delicious. You got it. See you next week, everybody.